I sterilize my cutting tools constantly, especially because you're cutting into orchids. Because um, orchids can have a lot of diseases if you're not careful, which is why almost everything I get when I first get it gets quarantined for at least a month or two um, before I put it in with somebody else or with the other orchids. Um, most responsible orchid you know, places, that's not gonna be a problem, but I can't lie that I've said that's never happened. Or occasionally someone will, I, you know, got one of these guys from Home Depot and they don't know what to do with it, so they'll, they'll just say, well here, will you take it? And I'm like, I don't really want it, but I, you know, I don't want it to die. So I'll take it, and some of those sometimes, you know, so you, you notice that, I, well that's a whole different area about disease. And, Generally, you don't have to worry about that because it's, it's especially nowadays much less common than it used to be. But anyway, I always sterilize, and of course, the way I sterilize is I have a little butane, you know, right here that just you just pop it on, and your little thing right here, and of course, now it doesn't want to. Oh, maybe I have it going on too hard. Well, now oh, there we go, and then I just take it and I sterilize the blade. You're going to do that for a little bit and, and then they're ready to go. But it's a good idea to keep your, your blades sterilized as you go from plant to plant. Anyway, you, you can. I, and rubbing alcohol will take care of most of it. And of course, oh, that was one of the things we didn't talk about. That's pests. We'll do that in a moment. Rubbing alcohol is one of your best friends. Okay. So a cinnamon. When you make a cut, um, especially along the, the, not so much the roots, but for some of the rhizomes and things, the thicker parts, cinnamon, I always dust cuts with cinnamon. It's, it's a really good natural antibiotic and, you know, fungal, antifungal thing. But anyway, so I want to I want to make sure I can show you about repotting here before we get going here. Let me get that out of the way, because I don't want to run out of time without doing at least one repot. So you got here, you just kind of have to stick them in here and... You know, you, you don't not be in that gentle. And you know, some of them are going to snap. You know, don't don't worry about it. Some of them are just not going to be happy. And twist it around, shove them down in there. There we go. I should have got my mix. Uh, so usually, actually, I don't usually take it out of the out of here. I have. Uh, uh, pails that I use, big like the, the from Home Depot, and I just go down and do it that way. But this so is you don't pre-soak pre the bark first. This is it's pre-soaked. Ah. Yeah, it's already been pre-soaked, and then I let it dry out a little bit because I don't like it to be really, really wet because then it doesn't it doesn't go down in as well. And I just use you know a plastic pot, just like that. Just take the medium. Like that. Hold your plant where you want it to be. Of course, this guy's, he'll, he'll right, right, because he was kind of turning to the side, but I'm going to go ahead and turn him up mostly up. Take this in here, toss some in because it'll go around the roots. Stand it so it kind of fills down in. Go back, get some more. It's not more complicated than this. However, I have my little tamper, usually I have, this is a piece of bamboo, and carefully, because you don't want to just snap roots, but just kind of go in there and kind of work it down in. It's a little bit more complicated with some of these guys that have the finer roots, but you know, it just takes a little bit more time, but Phalaenopsis is a really pretty easy 